we'll start with a few class dynamics so we all very clear on class all right here are the in class logistics guys remember guys that as entrepreneurs in class and coaching class the professors will give you the solutions and they will ask you the questions as an entrepreneur nobody will give you any problems or any solutions as entrepreneurs you have to find the problems yourself and you have to find the solutions to your problems and you have to find your teams all right now and i'm pleased to introduce to you now professor milind okay professor milind is an iit bombay alum okay one of our most illustrious alums actually <laughs> he did not not only win the all rounder gold medal in his year he was uh, he represented india in swimming okay yeah? so he was a india national champion in swimming and he went to the world championship in swimming he um he uh, from uh, from iit bombay he went to stanford from stanford he went to kellogg school of business okay along the way he picked up some 20 odd patents he's worked in mckinsey he's worked in google he's been a global product head for a company he'll talk about called qualtrix and he's also been teaching he's also been teaching at 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 university of utah now he's in a teaching at a new york university and he's also um online um as the president for um great learning which is part of byju's the up the college education okay um so he's a president for north america and he's working with universities like mit and other college you know other uh, other uh, corporations okay so we have one of the most illustrious industry slash academician to guide us so with that let me hand over to milin all right over to you milin yep thanks thanks dev and hello everyone uh, so good to see everybody uh, you know i see uh, uh, you know a little bit of myself uh, almost you know more than 20 years back um you know sitting in the classroom just like all of you uh and i'm sure you know just like all of uh, just like me back then uh, i'm not sure if you all have had your dinner or uh, if you were planning on having dinner um i'm sure you all are also hungry and also have other things uh, other assignments and so on so let's make sure that you know we use this time effectively yeah uh you know as uh, uh, professor devdeep said that uh, this class is a lot about what you do uh, outside the classroom just as much as what you would learn in the classroom so what we will do is we will uh, uh, you know keep it very interactive uh, the focus is really going to be about you know what have you done outside the building uh, and what have you found out and we want to use this time to discuss uh, and uh, mentor and you know guide each other on you know how you can uh, you know make progress towards you know fleshing out your product uh, you are uh, you know trying to get to product market fit yeah that at a high level is uh, kind of the the spirit with which we want to keep these these sessions going um uh, professor devdeep went over the logistics um and uh, you know one of the things we'll also do i know that uh, professor devdeep you mentioned that uh, the focus uh, keep it on the slide but uh, would love to also uh, hear from all of you uh you know on uh, as we go through this material right that we have put together uh, a lot of it is material that we have put together based on our own experiences on the field and uh, you know just like how we are also encouraging you to go out there on the field and find out what your customer is saying for us as teachers our customers are you you know you are the you are a customer right the student so i want to hear just as much from you on each of these things that we'll be talking about yeah so i want to see how we can uh, uh, hear from all of you uh, as we go through these topics um what we are going to do today you know so today uh, uh, you know what uh, professor devdeep and i discussed was that look uh, i will talk about uh, some um, you know some learnings from the field right uh, some uh, ideas on how uh, how to do certain things right how i did it how so a few of my colleagues have done this you know build products uh, but i also want to put the focus back on you yeah and try to understand from you well uh, this is how i did it and uh, you know entrepreneurship um, a lot like science right it's think of it like a science experiment right you're all scientists you're all engineers we start with a hypothesis we make some assumptions uh we we test it we learn something we go back we refine our hypothesis right so 
uh, as you you know learn in this course i want you to keep testing your hypothesis and tell it back to us right what have you learned what is not true anymore what, uh, what do you think you will need to do based on what you have learned yeah um so with that uh, let's get started what i will do today is i'll try to see if we can cover at least two two topics one is around customer discovery and the other one is around identifying the customer's need or more specifically their unmet need yeah we we'll talk a little bit about that if time permits we can jump into a few other topics like identifying your market segment you know uh, you know looking at the user journey uh, what they call as customer journey mapping right we'll go through those exercises but uh, you know i keep saying if time permits because the, the biggest thing you will get from this course is not the lectures but what you do outside the building and bring it back into this classroom and tell us what you are thinking right and and tell us about your learnings um with that well uh, you know what you see here is this uh, chart about uh, you know how to launch a product and take it to market right and i bring and i start with this chart uh, to you know highlight an, an important point which is you know this what you see here right so here you see a typical you know you have an idea great you know and a product and uh, you know eventually it takes off right and we all want to be in that up and to the right curve right the part where it takes off right we all want uh, to see our product take off and you know all the good things that come with it that like the fame the money right um and but because of that you know what has uh, what has happened today in our world is that people think okay so if i need to get the product to take off i need to do learn a lot of skills i need to do spend a lot of my time and energy on that that up and to the right part right it makes sense right i mean if you think about where should i focus i'll focus on that green rectangle there right that's where i should uh, try and optimize my my product Uh, and so on the problem is you know what, what that is the world of marketers right uh, and nothing wrong with that you know they spend a lot of cycles around how do i better message my product how do i better advertise it how do i better uh, you know build a brand around it right uh, however you know there's a famous saying uh, you know I, i will start using a lot of phrases right so one of the phrases used is uh, putting lipstick on a pig right putting lipstick on a pig Uh, you can put all kinds of makeup and lipstick but at the end of the day and you can try to sell it right you can sell that pig as saying this is a supermodel the reality is it is still a pig right eventually the world finds out and eventually they say you know what are you trying to sell me here right you might probably sell one customer and second customer eventually people say this is a pig that you're selling right you just put lipstick on a pig in a similar way you know the truth is that 85% 85% of products that are launched that you know whether it's entrepreneurs or intrapreneurs and i have been a victim of it i have had several products that i launched which have failed both as an entrepreneur as well as you know inside a company and the odds are always going to be against us if you want to launch a product but you can improve the odds and one simple thing you can do is you know most of these products that fail is not because they haven't done a great job of you know advertising and marketing and branding and putting that lipstick and all kinds of makeup they fail because they haven't kept you know spent the time trying to understand who is you know what the heck is the product that the customer needs right what wh who is the customer to begin with you know wh what are their needs you know what are the most important pressing features that are missing in whatever solutions are offered today right? there's a lot of thinking that needs to be spent there which unfortunately a lot of us you know who look at uh, uh success stories and uh, look at that uh, facebook uh, which went ipo you know uh, one of the greatest ipos of all time i look at that dropbox and say oh this guy just managed to build something sitting in his basement i can do the same what they don't realize is that what you see is only the, the what you see in the press is only what happens in that in that right uh, rectangle there but there are all those years that they spent before that just churning and you know iterating on the product and that's what i'm hoping you all spend your time on yeah so you all spend your time optimizing and iterating and 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 retesting your hypothesis uh in 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 all this part on the left now um 
you know one of the things we'll also do is we'll start sharing a bunch of templates right what uh, and the goal here is so that you uh, put it to work right don't just treat it as okay this is just some uh, you know some slide that i'm going to you know keep at the uh, in in the back of you know my in in my room and never touch it uh, we want you to start filling these right um you know one of the things uh, i i worked at mckinsey and you know one of my biggest uh, lessons from mckinsey uh, was about you know they would put together even before the the first session when we met the client to help understand what their problem is and put together a solution and in fact even after the first session we would always have this you know we would call it the ghost deck right the ghost deck which was basically a, a, a deck you know a bunch of powerpoint slides uh, because you know in mckinsey the end product that you deliver is uh, you know a strategy which is put together in a powerpoint slide right but here's the thing you know typically you would think it all right, as a consultant you would go you would talk to the customer and you know uh, your client and then keep getting uh, feedback and then eventually flesh out you know what uh, uh, what the answer is and come up three months with a grand answer that's never the case you know and and i learned that at mckinsey very well where you know my my boss uh, he told me look always have a answer right always have a answer the answer can keep it can and you should and you keep uh, it trade and keep refining that answer but always have uh, you know uh, an answer always have that ghost deck where you put in your answers you put in your view of the world uh, your hypothesis your assumptions right uh, but have an answer on what is it that you want to eventually deliver in a similar way you know eventually in this course you do have to have you know a product ready you do need to be clearly art, able to articulate you know Im- imagine at the end of this course you're going to be sit- standing in front of you know we are going to switch roles right you are going to be the one who's presenting and there's going to be a bunch of investors and they are going to be asking you imagine that they're going to be asking you these questions who is your target market and tell me what's that need that you're exactly solving for them you know what what's uh, what has changed in the market why should we think about this now right why should why was this problem solved 10 years back or why do you think it's the right time and it is not too early right what is what is your value proposition what's your differentiator who is going to be your competition here clearly there has to be competition if there isn't that means that there's something fishy here you know okay even if you do have that how are you going to take this to market right what's going to be your customer acquisition cost um what will success look like how do you know this will work right and so what, what exactly are you measuring here to know it works and you know what are the things that can go wrong right all these things are something that any investor is going to ask you and grill you so you might as well have an answer now which maybe brings me to the first uh, uh, question i have uh, how many of you uh, already have an idea that you are working on that uh, you you think you'd be able to start filling up the sheet now Uh, i'm not sure if this is uh, if i can if you're set up to to hear what students have to say but if you if any of you already have if any of your teams already have an idea or if you as an individual have an idea uh, would love to hear that has anyone already started pulling together you know what's the idea they want to work on and you know you, you realize you're putting you on the spot right right from day one but that is you know welcome to the world of uh, you know entrepreneurs you know I'll, i'll tell you a little bit of a story um uh, you know uh, on my uh, uh, first day you know when i joined this little startup called paltrix uh, you know i was asked to uh, partly because you know we did not have enough people right we were short staff so although i had joined to head their product uh, i was asked to you know go and sit in the customer support uh, you know there was this one row of phones and i'll also pick up the phones and answer customer calls right um and you know i think on hindsight it the, my boss who was the co-founder by uh, you know of coltrix i think he had a reason why he did that uh, you know one was of course he was short staff so he needed some somebody to just man the phones uh, but there was another reason which is he wanted me to hear what are the issues that the customers have you know on hindsight i think it was the right thing to do right i was i started uh, getting i was thrown into the fire right from day one but with that i also learned to also have a answer so when the customer said you know the product is in working i had just started right i had no idea you know how the product works why what are the issues why it's not working but i had to have an answer on what must be going on 
right? Anyway, so with that, I, I know I'm putting you on the spot, uh, right? And you may not have thought through all these answers, but I want you to start at least making an attempt, right? And think of this like a science project, right? Uh, you know, in science, uh, in the, the way scientists work or should work, or the way each of you should be working, is always have an answer, a hypothesis. This is what I think is going to happen. And then go and prove or disprove that, right? And think of this, uh, you know, trying to get to product market fit as the same exercise. You've got to always have an answer on who's your market, what's their need, <coughs> what's the trend. And you might find that, you know, if you're very wrong, uh, you, you know, as you start making progress, you realize, oh, my God, you know. Um, this was never the need. The need was completely something else, and that is fine. But at least it gets you to start thinking about, uh, you know, about you know what's the product you want to build. Okay. So with that, anyone? We have uh, come up with an idea, but uh, we have not finalized it. That we will start building on it. But uh, this is something that we researched on, so I could speak about it. Um, so we are we are thinking of um, uh, using blockchain technology for. Um, KYC uh, procedure. So in uh, India, every customer has, whenever a financial institution onboards a customer, uh, they do they do a KYC procedure, right? So we have studied currently how is it being done, and um, uh, which is a tedious process. And uh, sure, uh, in the past decade, the process has improved a lot. But uh, even the final stage at which the KYC onboarding is done, being currently uh, just using a distributed uh, uh, data set to do that will introduce some uh, remove some inefficiencies and uh, that 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 should help it right so and we we've also uh, found a technical paper which uh, talks about how to implement or build that kind of a system uh, it it talks about it on a high level uh, it needs to be seen whether we can do it uh, programmatically <coughs> or not number one and also whether uh, there is enough market need because there is already there are already organizations who onboard um, uh, customers using this KYC thing. So there there are companies doing it. The thing is, can we do it better than them uh, using the papers that we are reading right now? Got it. No, this is great. And uh, what's your name? Um, this is Team One, and my name is Shashank. Shashank. No, thanks. Thanks, Shashank. You know, uh, I'm really happy that uh, you know you spoke up. You know, and you, you spoke up confidently. I, uh, I I hope others also, you know, uh, grab every opportunity they can to to get hold of the mic. Yeah, you know, one of the things as an entrepreneur that you will you, you need to build is your ability to just put yourself out there, and whoever you can, uh, uh, you know, be ready to pitch, right? Because every potential person you see around could be either your investor or your uh, uh, a customer or I guess even your competitor uh, and it doesn't matter but they are somebody that could in some way shape or form impact you know where you want to go with your product right the reason why they call it the elevator pitch right the elevator pitch is that look uh, you know imagine you're getting into an elevator and you have what 30 seconds maybe uh, three minutes in that elevator with this one person who you, you know, start having a uh, conversation, you say, oh my God, you know, this guy or this lady might help me. And how do you quickly put together your articulate, you know, your, uh, your points in a, in a succinct way, you know, in an effective way. So people see, you know, the vision, people see, you know, what, uh, what this product is capable of. And, you know, of course, depending on what you want to do here, whether you want to close them as a customer or as an investor, you can eventually, you know, make that pitch, right? So, good job, uh, Shashank. Is there any other team who wants to talk about what is their idea? Good evening. Yes. Uh, it's Ritam from Team 2. So, it's been an uh, individually, it, I started with the idea and I hope to rope some people in, in this uh, semester. <laughs> so, the idea is basically, if you can have a look around the classroom, you can see there are, I think, seven black hoodies and certain uh, polo t-shirts. So uh, right now, um, the fashion industry is going through a boom. There are certain IPOs that have come up. And but all uh, but the main crux is that uh, is a lot of problems with the teenagers this uh, age that we are quite conscious about our image. And most uh, importantly, the clothes we wear 
even when a friend goes out in a function, he asks me, uh, hey, does this look good on you? So why not automate this process and make it available to everyone our age, have a complete uh, outfit solution for uh, the teenagers, the boys out there, and here, with the current advances in computer vision, the research that has been going on for uh, years now, I think it's we are at a good juncture to start this, as well as the advances with metaverse, it can grow out into a huge scale. So, Milan, just one point. Remember that this was a project in ENT609 last semester, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so now you've got a new team. Yes, sir. And hopefully now you'll have a lot of chances to implement because marketing finance taught you how to do a business plan. Mm -hmm. In this class, hopefully with the four other gentlemen I can see sitting next to you, um, you will be able to actually implement the recommendation engine and so on and so forth. So good luck to you. Melinda, I just thought that I'll mention to you, this is a carryover from a last semester with this, with Rhythm, but he's got a new team now. So what do you mean? Yeah. No, thanks. Good one, Rizal. Anyone else has ideas or is thinking about some idea? We are team three. Uh, you know, we are working on uh, creating uh, you know, a SaaS based uh, startup uh, which helps companies use their sensitive information, uh, say their financial transaction uh, information or let's say uh, medical records in a uh, healthcare setup. So, you know, uh, these data uh, you know, silos are uh, in such a way that uh, they can't be easily accessed without breaching some privacy laws. So uh, what we intend to do is we provide a platform where uh, we use a technology called federated learning where they can train their AI models uh, not by you know uh, accessing the data uh, stored in separate silos uh, but in fact uh, you know sending out the models to uh, every single uh, silo and then you know training that uh eventually making the uh, model uh, better in a parallel sense rather than you know uh, do doing it one by one so uh, this have a huge impact on uh, companies like you know uh, amex and citibank which uh, uh, operate cross countries and then they have to uh, you know, follow varying da uh, data privacy regulations uh, across the, uh, the globe so yeah i mean uh, we plan to uh, build this tech and uh, acquire initial customers by uh, implementing our tech on uh, something more viable uh, in the initial stages and then uh, pitching that to a uh, few of our initial customers. This would be okay. Go to market. So, one of the you know, uh, good to know. Uh, see, one of the things I want everyone to start thinking about back to what you see here, yeah, which is, uh, you know, who is your customer? Who is that segment, right? Uh, so for that fashion, the person, Ritham, you're working on the fashion. So Ritham, uh, like in the fashion industry, so who, who do you think is your customer here? See, what I want everybody to understand, and we know next time when you all, when we ask you what is your, uh, uh, what is your idea, and when you pitch it, uh, you know, I want you all to start following a certain framework, yeah, which is always, always, always start with who is the customer, what is you know the, their need right their most important need maybe their top three needs yeah uh, whether it is uh, you know the the idea around the federated the, the idea of you know i guess what you're looking at is compliance in banks right so you should be very clear you know who is that customer uh, or whether it's the fashion thing you know who is your customer here and you know i, I keep emphasizing that because uh, see it's not going to be you and me yeah so that customer for finance uh, it's not that teenager that you just spoke about, right? It's going to be, you know, these uh, uh, either these brands or these e-commerce stores, right? So you need to understand who is the one who's going to customize, uh, who is the customer? It's a simple thing, right? It's whoever is going to pay you money for this, right? So you want to know who's going to be the one who's going to be paying you money for this. Maybe it is, by the way, those, those uh, teenage kids that you're talking about who want to know whether they look good or not. But you also got to be aware that, you know, how much are they willing to pay? right for something like that uh, the same goes for uh, you know you, you talked about the compliance here you got to understand you know who truly will at the end of the day who will pay money you know for for that service yeah uh, and maybe i'll uh, jump into some examples to tell you what i mean by be super clear who your customer is 
who's going to really pay money for this right um the the, the same goes for kyc uh, you know what you're doing there uh, you know uh, who's going to be the customer here uh, is it going to be the person who needs uh, that uh, you know uh, their um, the process simplified is it going to be the bank uh, even within that you know which function in the bank is it that's willing to pay for that service uh, is it going to be an intermediary you know uh, like um, uh, say one of the things uh, that people try to get uh, you know uh, that kyc becomes important is uh, and increasingly so where you know in india a lot of people are now realizing the value of uh, you know investing and putting their money into mutual funds and the likes uh, is going to be you know uh, banks don't do it you have a whole bunch of intermediaries right these so called financial advisors uh, or mutual fund advisors and so on are they going to be your customers right somebody in that chain is the one who is going to say oh this is uh, this is actually going to help me uh it's going to save me a lot of time or it's going to help me make a lot of money i'll be actually able to get a cut out of this so i'm going to and they are the ones who are going to become your customers right so uh you, you got to uh, be very clear who that person is you may not know that right now but that's what that's the whole, what this whole class is about you got you're going to make an assumption you're going to say okay maybe i think this is going to be my customer and here's why here's what's in it for them right and uh, and test that right you're going to go out to the fields uh, whoever is working on the the kyc you know maybe you go out to the bank and ask you know how does the bank work today you right in terms of kyc how long does it take for somebody to get their kyc done maybe they say well you know uh, actually it's quite a simple process in which case you're probably wasting your time but then they say wait a minute actually you know uh, while most of it is a pretty simple process you know that part where people have to uh, you know get set up with a with a provident fund or a mutual fund that takes a lot of time because you have to meet certain regulations okay now tell me more who who does that oh that we don't do that it's actually we work with a financial advisor you know, there are many of them who do that okay so then you decide okay maybe your customer is somebody else you start talking to them right so the point is while each of you have talked about your technologies right whether it is metaverse and ar vr or whether it is you know this um, uh, so we talk about that ai learning model to uh, to, to better ensure um, uh, you know data privacy or somebody has talked about you know blockchain technology uh, you know this course is going to be less about the technology i'm not trying to diminish technology in fact you will have i think in the next session we will have you uh, in fact uh, start using these ai tools uh, you know potentially even blockchain tools to to quickly start prototyping right but uh, this class is much more about well assume you have the technology to to get all that done do you know who really is going to pay you the money for all this at the end of the day right uh, and how soon can you determine that the sooner you can you know in an ideal world even before you write that first line of code yeah even before you write that first line of code you have a commitment from a customer that they are willing to pay you money for this right you want to get to that stage and just think about it that is very hard especially for us engineers right because for us our first reaction is oh you know i know i have learned about this metaverse i learned about blockchain i learned about ai that is my strength after all right that's what's going to differentiate me so i'm going to start with that unfortunately customers don't work that way right you need to now start thinking more like you're a, a bcom student right who's looking at the money first you know show me the money first then i'll worry about the technology assume the technology will will, will come together but first show me the money right so i want you all to start answering it every question from now on in that lens yeah who is going to be my customer what, what is the need that they have why do i think that's their biggest need right and how much value is is there behind it how much if i was that customer here's how much i think they would be willing to pay for this right and the more evidence you can provide in every class that where i'll be asking you this question i or professor they'll be asking questions uh, the more uh, progress you're going to make right so the short if there's one thing i want you all to walk out of this is every single class i'll be having a very simple question for all of you show me the money right show me how much money you think which basically means show me the customer right which means you know have you got out of the building talk to someone and come back with a number right show me the money yeah
So just hang on to those ideas. And I think I did not ask a couple other teams. We'll get to that. Uh, I'll try to cover a couple of things. Okay, I'll try to cover today. So as you are going out there, right after this class, I want you all to start thinking about your ideas. Great. But I want you to do a couple of things. One is research the heck out of that industry. Okay. You know, the good thing is today we live in a world, you know, uh, and I say a good thing because sometimes you need to know what was not there to, to appreciate the things that you have today. Right. Today we live in a world of where, where thanks to internet, thanks to even tools like chat GPT that you're seeing now, there's so much that you can just research and, and, uh, uh, and learn even before that first interview with the customer, right? Uh, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't go out and talk to a customer, but that also means that the uh, expectation on you is much more today that before you go and talk to a customer, you don't want your customer to, you don't want to start the conversation with, help me understand the industry. Could you tell me how the industry works? You want to go to your customer with, hey, you know, I, I, I understand your industry, like if you look at that KYC, I've understood all this whole workflow, the, you know, the stakeholders here and so on. You, you need to uh, have read so much that you need to be able to stand eye to eye with that customer, with that bank manager or that mutual fund manager and say, look, you know, boss, I, 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 I understand it pretty well. But of course, you know, you have 20 years of experience in this space. You know, I want to learn about what is missing here. Right. So, so number one research the heck out of your industry okay i'm not talking about your technology technology will come second technology is important but i want you to spend time thinking about the business of whatever business you are in yeah and second i want you to get out of the building okay i want you to go and talk to cust real customers okay um, and again when i say real customers you know for the person who's looking at that the uh, ar vr metaverse for the clothes your real customer is probably not your roommate or your hostel mate or your classmate uh, who will say, yeah, I like that idea of an app which will help me decide which clothes to wear, right? Your real customer is, or maybe they are, but then, you know, if that's what they say, you say, okay, good. Now tell me how much money will you pay for this, right? And you should see what they say at that point. And if at that point they say, well, you know, I'd rather save my, uh, you know, 20 rupees to get my Maggie from the, there instead of trying to pay anything for this app. You know, you have your answer, right? So you got to always try to follow where the money, try to figure out, you know, get out of the building and as quickly as possible, try to talk to who you think your real customers are. Okay, so these two things is what I want at the end of this, uh, uh, you to do in, in the in the coming week. Actually, in the coming weeks, maybe in, in the coming, in, in your entire lifetime. And I bring that up because, you know, this customer discovery process uh, is a lifetime, or at least a lifetime of the company thing. Yeah. Everything you see here, you know, who's your target market, their need, their trends, their value proposition, all that is great. But people often make the mistake of saying, all right, so it's a one time thing, right? I'm going to find it out once and I'm done. But again, you know, uh, Imagine if you were, if you are that scientist, you know, science never ends, right? You always keep asking why, you know, and you keep testing your assumptions and you keep testing, you know, what you don't know. And customer discovery is the same thing, you know, to this day, uh, you know, till my last day at Qualtrics, you know, and I spent seven years there, I was always surprised every time I met a new customer, I learned something new, right? And, uh, you know, back to what Professor Devdeep said, you know, that, that journal that you're supposed to put together, there's a reason why he's saying have a journal. Because every time I learn something new, I would go back and try to add it back to my journal, right? And, you know, think of you, you as your, uh, your mind as an AI system, right? You know how AI works, right? Every new data that you get, you put, feed it back into the system and it, you know, corrects itself. It tries to use that new input to get to even better insights. Right. And that process never stops. Right. The day it stops, that means that's the day when your company is going to start failing. Right. Because the customer, the, their needs keep changing. Right. The customer is not stagnant. Today is KYC. Tomorrow it might be, you know, KYC with this new UPI system. And that need will further evolve and evolve and evolve. And what that means for you is that what we call as customer discovery, that never stops right you're always on the treadmill around customer discovery 
which also means one way to be good at customer discovery is also be good to speak up right whether it's in that elevator whether it's you know you you meeting somebody at the gym whether you you know are meeting you know in your hostel uh, mess you you're having dinner with someone uh, every person out there now is going to help you discover your customers better they may not be your customer but they might be able to you know give you leads to potential folks who who are your customers right so you are always now on the hook to keep discovering and discovering and getting better and better at knowing your customer right other than your customer there should be by the end of this uh, class if there's one thing i would like to see everybody be good at is other than your customer there should be no one who should know the customer better than you right in fact i would like to say that you know uh, you should know your customer even better than the customer themselves you know who are really good at this companies like facebook and amazon you know you think you know yourself but they know you better than you they are in this you know in the indian context like somebody like flipkart they know what you what you are are going to buy and what you will buy even before you do right and that's an amazing example of customer discovery where they know you better than you right they know the customer better than the customer themselves i need you to get to that stage right and you can now also imagine let that sink in for a minute you need to know your customer better than the customer themselves right uh, if you just think about that that means that your customer whoever you know that, that 40 year old individual you need to know that person that you need to make up for that 40 years of time by researching the hell out of that customer so that you know that customer better than what the last 40 years that that customer has spent knowing himself right so i want you to uh, I, if i if i not emphasize that enough i need you to go out there and research the heck out of your customer yeah all right how do you go about doing this how do you go uh, discovering my you know your customer well here the four step process right uh, again treat these as templates treat, treat these as you know guiding posts okay um to help you just make progress faster okay as i said start with have a hypothesis okay so uh, and i like how you got you all of you already have an hypothesis write that down in your journal today that my idea solves there must be some problem right this is you know going to help you articulate that problem better and better right the, the more um, uh, you know as uh, mark twain said uh, you know i uh, did not have time to write a short uh, letter so i wrote a long one instead right it's very easy to write you know my customers are you know the person the, the teenager in the hostel and my customer is that uh, uh, e-commerce firm and my customer is this and uh, I, you know the, the the merchandising firm and the retail store and, the, and and so on and you can have a lot of ands there the more ands you have in your answer the less uh, uh, you know uh, conviction the, the, the less well formed your solution is right you need to be succinct you need to know what your problem is what's that one big problem that you're really trying you know the, the, the biggest problem for that customer that you're trying to solve and of course the solution follows after that the solution i'm not too worried yeah uh, there are a lot of technologies today you all are really bright individuals and you will be able to figure out the right solution but you know take it from someone who was in your shoes and who's always started with the solution first only to realize later that you know that was uh, never the 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 problem worth solving the problem worth solving was you know just trying to spend time understanding you know what exactly is the problem for this customer yeah so anyway so define but it all starts you got to start somewhere so it starts with a hypothesis write that down then you know just like any science experiment right you have a hypothesis but what do you do you uh, how do you know that hypothesis is true well what are the assumptions you made right um, you know or, or think of it like a mathematical proof right a conjecture i have a conjecture well uh, what needs to be true for that conjecture to be proven well you know here are the assumptions right so keep asking yourself you know what are the assumptions i have made uh, yeah um what's uh, how how do you know this problem is true what what needs to be true for 
uh, this worldview of yours to, to to be true, right? So, what needs to be true, you know, for the person who's looking at um, uh, the KYC, um, you know, your idea is to uh, help streamline the KYC process, you know, using uh, a blockchain technology, right? Now, uh, just take that one statement: streamline the KYC process using blockchain technology. Forget that using blockchain technology for a minute, yeah? Ask yourself, well, streamline the KYC process. First of all, uh, is that even a problem, right? Streamlining that process is what you're saying, which means what, what, what's the assumption you made? Your assumption you made here is that it is today not streamlined, okay? Well, let's define the stream. What do you mean by streamline? Well, maybe the answer is that today it is very time consuming, all right? Well. Um, uh, let's try to define what do you mean by time consuming? Is it uh, something that takes 30 minutes, uh, 30 hours, 30 days, right? So what are the assumptions you're making about this being a problem? And you know, maybe that 30 days is not a problem for people. Maybe that is fine. But the, you made an assumption that that is not fine, right? It does seem intuitively it's not fine. But you know, we don't know. We need to really, uh, you know, check our assumptions. And you know, you might find that it was never about the time. Maybe it was something else. Maybe it was that people saying the time is fine. I don't mind waiting 30 days. What I do mind about this whole KYC thing is I keep hearing about all this fraud that's happening. And my fear is not so much the time. It's the, it's the, it's the safety. It's, it's, you know, uh, 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 will my account get hacked? Aha. Uh -huh. So now you have something here, right? Now you, you, you go back to your hypothesis. Say my idea solves. Not the time problem, not streamlining KYC, but ensuring that the KYC happens in a safe manner, right? Because now you realize uh, once you talk to customers that that very hypothesis that you started with needs to be refined. And that is fine. That's the reason why we call it a hypothesis, right? Uh, but what is not fine is to test your hypothesis, okay? So I want you all to start working on the customer discovery process. And here's a four-step way to start filling that up. Yeah, so next class when we meet, I would like you to start filling this template, okay? Define what's the hypothesis, what's the problem you're trying to solve. There's a reason I'm, we are calling it a hypothesis, right? Because nobody has the answers yet. Uh, but what you should be able to, uh, what you owe to yourself, like any good scientist, is to say that, look, I may be wrong, right? And if I, am, if I need to prove that I'm right, what assumptions need to come true? List them out. Yeah, be true to yourself. Okay. Um, and, you know, one way to do this, by the way, because, you know, one of, it's just human tendency, right? The more, by the way, that you notice, the more you progress you make, the more days that pass in validating your idea, the more you get wedded to that idea, right? This is psychology 101. You know, we call it the, the ownership bias, right? It becomes more and more your baby, right? And then, uh, uh, you know, everything... And looks like you always find a way to justify everything you see around you as why your hypothesis is indeed correct. Yeah. So one way to get around that is that it's a good thing you guys have, uh, are, have been put into teams. In fact, I would say forget even talking internally to your team. You know, reach out to one of the people who was in that other team, right? And try to ask them, try to uh, you know put this hypothesis to them and see what they think. Right, because you you're trying to find out an outsider who can challenge your your hypothesis, right? So, but basically, get somebody who can be the the devil's advocate, as they say. Yeah, try who can challenge your 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 hypothesis, who can challenge your assumptions, right? Uh, because you know it will be hard for you the more you get wedded to your idea to have somebody challenging it. But that's something you should all uh, you know absolutely have. You know, it's at, as part of the customer discovery process. Always force yourself to be challenged. Yeah. Uh, the next thing is get out of the building. Right. If I've not said that before, I'm saying it now. I'll say it many, many times. In fact, I'll probably ask you that next time we meet. My first question is going to be how many of you actually got out of the building. Yeah. So, and when you get out of the building and talk to people, ask and and I have put together. You know how to because people often struggle. I I did. I struggled with when I you know, went and met a customer, uh, you know, uh, I, I always struggle with how do I ask them questions, right? In fact, I used to make all the rookie mistakes of, you know, again, back to, I had 
a certain idea i had a certain product that i was building and of course you know as a um, you know as the the product manager you get wedded to that right so my question should be so uh, how do you uh, uh, what do you think about this product right what do you think about this idea simple question right i want to ask that to my customers can anyone think of by the way why that's a dumb question to ask why a simple question like what do you think about my idea why do you think that's a dumb question anyone yeah go ahead i think it's a bit stupid because you will be always biased towards your idea you will always think that yeah it's my idea i can yeah i i think it's true without like testing it and you're just assuming that the other person will like the idea that yeah yeah indeed like what you say is correct yeah no that that is one thing which is you know um, you are always biased and you will show that bias right in fact one of the questions i would also ask which was you know kind of thing looking back it was so uh, you know uh, clearly not the right thing to do which is i would say you know um, uh, do you think this is a good idea right uh, or uh, uh, you know um, um, uh, 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 yeah or, or i would also ask them how would you rate this idea of mine right how do you rate my idea you see the the reason with the flaw with such questions is that Uh, imagine now if i have some idea right and i'm asking you all this question what would you say you know nobody wants to be a jerk in somebody's face right and i kind of learned that because people would say oh great great keep doing congratulations you know, keep going right good idea nobody is going to say uh, this is crap right uh, this is going to fail uh, that is stupid nobody says that right unfortunately although people need we need more people who can give you candid feedback hopefully we will right professor devdeep and i that's one of the things uh, we we owe it to you to give you that candid feedback right because the rest of the world won't right uh, they will of course probably behind your back say you know that was such a stupid idea i'll never buy that and they will never buy it by the way right uh, although whenever you meet them they will say when you ask them do you really like this idea what are they going to say they will say yeah yeah keep going keep going right nobody says no but you want to hear the no's as much as you want to hear the yes right and when they do say no you want to hear that all right great look no is a great answer but can you tell me why right what would it take to get to that yes right and you want to find that out as soon as you can so any uh, on that note since i struggle with it i put together some some thoughts on you know how to conduct good customer interviews yeah how to ask the right questions which i think i have in the next from the one thing i would finally say is what i kept saying before your customer discovery never 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 ends right you got to everything you hear go and put it back into your journal what i would also like to see i hope is that your journal gets by the end of this course gets so full that you are asking professor devdeep for another journal because every interaction that you have with someone is an interaction with a potential customer a potential competitor we'll talk about how to deal with potential competitors but that's good if you talk to competitors right because you want to know what's going on you want to as much as possible learn the art of uh, having the competitors trust you and tell you everything that they have learned right uh, because they have uh, it's good that uh, you know there is there is competition in your field by the way right if you have competition it's a good thing you know there's a famous saying that um, the, the the leaders in any 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 new field are the ones with who have arrows on their back right it's the the, the first movers who have arrows on their back yeah and it's good if there are first movers out there it tells you that a there's a market that's why there are people who decided to go and move into that space and b you see the arrows on their back you want to know where the arrows are going to come from right and the best way to know that is to ask that first mover where did you get those arrows on your back from right so you got to learn to talk to your competitors as well so talk to your customers talk to your cu- competitors so, talk to you know um, uh, your potential partners but keep talking keep asking them questions right and you'll need to keep it you, you putting that whatever you learn back into your journal because some day when this company takes off you will be reaching out some day when you launch the product you will go back to that journal that you have put together and hopefully that will have hundreds of names they are going to list them as who's my customer who's my competitor uh, who's my potential partner who's my potential user and you're going to pick up the phone and talk to them 
and say, hey, customer, remember you talked, we, we discussed about this idea and you said, it, you know, if you make these changes, it will be useful and that you would be willing to buy. Well, guess what? I have the product now and here's the price for it. Go ahead and buy, right? For that, you need to have, you know, you need to start creating what they call in, in technology world as CRM, customer, you know, a customer database. Start creating that in your journal today. Yeah. All right. So let me keep going so, though. But here's, you know, what kind of questions you want to ask, right? One is keep it open-ended. Focus on what, you know, that's another thing. You know, something that I learned was uh, if you ask them what they do, people often try to think about, uh, often say what they would ideally like to do, right? Uh, people might say, oh, you know, this is a problem. But if you ask them on it, how often did this problem occur in the last month? You might be surprised. You might say, oh, well, uh, maybe it happened once a month. You say, oh, okay, and and that is the biggest problem for you, right? And that doesn't make sense. So don't focus on what they say. Try to ask them more about what they do, right? What they did, right? Uh, more of what they did in the past tense, because again, nobody knows what, if I ask you, what will you do tomorrow? You might say, well, you know, I will go to the gym and I'll, 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 uh, I'll finish my homework and so on, because we all like to visualize this ideal self of ourselves your customers are no different but instead if i asked you all right what did you do yesterday did you go to the gym uh, well no you know something happened and what about a day before well you know that day i had to go for this doctor visit and day before well you know there was this wedding so then i know that you know that thing about the gym is yeah forget it you're not going to the gym right so focus on what they do focus on what they did not what they say right and you know, have curiosity is your biggest weapon, right? Be curious. Just be curious. If you know, uh, I meet a lot of people who are introverts, and they say, "Look, I can't go and talk in front of my customer." That is fine, but you are an engineer. The reason you are in IIT to begin with is because you had one thing that was always your weapon, which was curious, right? You were just curious about that math problem, curious about that science problem, curious about how to solve something, and you never let go till you figured out how to solve it, till you got to that aha moment. Right now, that is your weapon and treat that as something that you will take with you when you go to the customer. And it shows if you're genuinely interested in being curious about the customer's problem, they will tell you a lot. Right. But if you show that you're not really interested, you're focusing on just your solution, your blockchain or your AI and all that stuff. You'll say, no, forget that this guy is not interested in knowing about me. I don't I'm also don't want to engage with him. Right. So anyway, so uh, here are some examples of customer questions that you can ask. Such as, you know, uh, what you see here, again, in the interest of time, I will try to uh, skip a lot of this, but uh, but um, uh, hopefully this gives you an idea, right? So for that person, uh, so maybe this is a good time to ask. Um, I had a question. Uh -huh. So uh, when you talked about talking to your competitors, uh, like you said, customer discovery is a difficult process. You really need to ask neutral questions and uh, I mean, it will take time to get the real insight. So why would a competitor share his hard earned customer insights to me if i am his direct competitor well that's a good question so but you know here's the thing um you know I, I, especially in this stage you know you are at a wonderful stage where you are out there just you don't have uh, you're not wedded to any idea right and this is a stage where you know it's it's also a great stage because you know see um it's a little bit of uh uh, you are still in the dating phase, right? As opposed to getting married, right? Because the 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 competitor has already gone into the married phase where you know he or she is married to their their one idea, and if they are a good entrepreneur, right? And you should be talking to the successful competitors, but if they are indeed successful, they are they know that there are a thousand things like I mentioned in that WhatsApp message, a thousand routes to take to get the PM to destination from A to B. But I need to focus on just one among those thousand and say no to the remaining nine nine ninety nine, right? And in a similar way, they know that there are the good thing is they've got a lot of arrows on their back. The other good thing is as they were making their way to a destination, they they were saw several forks in the road. They could have taken the left or the right road and they chose one. They had to make a decision and they kept making decisions along the way. And because of that, they always have at the back of my mind, if only I had taken the road not taken, right? If only I had taken, made that other decision, right? Maybe that was the market that I could have tried also. They probably have in mind at some point to go after that market, 
but they don't have time right now right and that's great because right now you can go to them and say that look you know i am looking at the kyc space as a whole and trying to understand what are the uh, you know open issues there you are of course in the same space and you are addressing a certain problem but help me understand the industry as a whole where do you see issues you know where do you see you know problems and the other thing that you can do with competitors if they are truly a good competitor i'll give you an example from my current line of work right, which is in edtech so i work in edtech you know i'm uh, uh, in in higher ed we we help upskill the workforce now here i talk to our competitors but you know i i don't focus on tell me about your product you know what is working right in your product you know what is you know uh, uh, what are your customers saying you know where are the opportunities to to to, to one up you clearly i don't say that but i know one thing though if they are really good competitors the ones i respect here's what i know that they all have in common they truly are committed towards the cause of improving education right and that's a great thing because if 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 that's also and by the way that's what i'd also encourage all of you you know back to the ideas that you all are talking about one of the criteria we are going to evaluate you all on is not just your ability to to make money not just that there is a customer not just that you know uh, uh, there's a big burning problem that you're solving but also the social impact here yeah i want to make sure that whether there's a kyc or you know helping people with their uh, 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 with their clothes or whether it is uh, you know helping with uh, the 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 compliance uh, on the data side that there is an impact to also help the society anyway why i bring that up is especially when you go with that mindset when i speak to my competitors i say forget all these things about you know what you are doing what i plan to do let's collectively talk about this one big problem that you know is going to be there in a lifetime how do you help solve the problem of education right how do we help our workforce get better educated and get uh, you know get trained for jobs of the future that is a big problem and if anything you know i forget that one or two competitors are talking to I w- we would need a million competitors to solve that problem it's such a huge problem today right so if there is competition that's great they are not your competition they are actually your collaborators here because the problem is so big the opportunities are so immense the uh, uh, the places where you can help make an impact are so abundant that you don't see them as competition anymore right so go with that mindset when you talk to your competitors if you go with that spirit if you say look i'm here to make a difference again using the example of education i'm here to make a difference to the, to education to help train our workforce i would love to brainstorm with you you know what what have you seen what are the big problems right and they'll in fact you know at that point they will say they will open up and tell you why they fail they'll say you know why why are these things not working for me you know everybody has some failures right and you want to hear that because you'll better hear about that from them than you commit the same mistakes right i hope does that help understand why you should talk to competitors you know go with the spirit of look forget about your specific solution let's talk about the industry and the the problems facing the industry and especially the social problems and everybody wants to engage and talk about that so let's do that uh, you know what i wanted to cover and you know, typically what i try to do uh, for everyone is you know i try to Excuse then me, use sir. some examples either that i experience myself so yeah i in uh, before getting into product market fit there's something called as founder market fit as well right i mean are we the right people to do uh, you know work on our idea so let's say there's a competitor uh, who which is founded by people really uh, good at the space they're working in let's say you know the, the uh, they have all the insight they have uh, they have uh, they want to get on the space so you know how can you gauge that you know uh, you're at the right place like how do you get to that founder market fit is it, is it even worth uh you know g- getting there so like can you elaborate more on something like this so let me uh, make sure i understood it right when you say founder market fit like are you the right person to solve that yeah, that exactly. uh, problem is that what you're right. asking yeah so that's a uh, good question so first of all um uh, you know th- so here's how, how i would answer that question right i would turn that founder market fit into also a product market fit question where the product is you right there's a market out there uh, which has a problem and you know you are uh, if you think of yourself and your team as the product then what do you want to see in a product right you want to see whether the product 
you know has the you know has that capability right uh, you want to see if that uh, a product is you know able to solve that that uh, that need that that uh, market has um, uh, you know you want to understand if that uh, you want to really understand whether um, uh, so as capability that's also you know whether you'll be uh, you, you have the uh, the, uh, the the passion you know the the uh, the curiosity for working on that problem right so uh, put it this way imagine see one of the things i want to make sure everybody understands here is no company uh, gets built uh, in a day in a month in a semester yeah so you got to understand that look i am going to spend this time really putting you know talking to hundreds of customers and that process will never stop right but what i know is that uh, you know uh, uh, if i really want to make this successful and make it take off i need to spend the next 5 years if not the next 10 years working on this right every by the way this is true with every company you know uh, by juice which is you know hopefully we we are uh, who, who bought us or whether great learning or call tricks uh, you know the funny thing about call tricks is people talk about the ipo what they don't talk about is it was there for almost 20 years you know we were toiling away you know in the basement trying to get it off the ground right so it takes time to make anything worth doing great so the question to you is are you willing to you know stay with a high level problem for the next 5 10 years right you don't have it doesn't have to be by the way the specific problem to your it doesn't have to be you know how to solve the problem of uh, uh, you know compliance of data which is put in different silos uh, in a banking system that can be one of the many many problems that that person eventually has to solve the larger problem could be around you know how do you uh, safeguard people's uh, you know data privacy or for the person who's working on that um, uh, uh, clothes idea that idea of you know uh, metaverse and and uh, vr ar you know to help you understand which clothes are the right fit could be part of the larger problem being that how do i make sure that you know people are able to um, uh, improve their self image right which is a big problem right people, uh, and if you try to look at that uber problem ask yourself is that the problem worth solving for me does do my team and i get excited about it and if the answer is yes right for the person who's you know working on the kyc if the problem is about you know how do i get the 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 hundreds of millions of indians today who don't even have a bank account right who don't even have who haven't been saving their money right who just been using that post office uh, whatever fund that uh, it was there for our uh, grandparents and our parents uh, because that was the only thing they knew because they were too scared to understand how this kyc business works how if my problem i'm trying to solve is getting those millions of people onto the banking system and and write the indian growth and take advantage of the indian growth story now that's a problem worth solving and if that excites you then solving that kyc problem is one of the many many problems that i that as you embark on this journey you will start addressing right uh, so think of what you're doing now is just a stepping stone and if you think about that when you say okay that's where i want to be and if you feel that look i want to wake up every day talking thinking about the same problem and living and breathing that same problem then i think you have found your answer you are the right fit right for that market does that answer your question oh uh, yeah yeah but then uh, you know let's say we get excited about a solution we, like you know not exactly the solution the problem uh, but then should you be intimidated by the fact that there are better people out there solving the same thing uh, it, like already you know they do exist right now so like you, you know. milin can i just add on one point yeah okay. go ahead then remember um the skills of a founder and i covered this in my nt609 course so rhythm and others would have known about it the skills of a founder are not necessarily the technical skills okay i have mentored teams who have done a very, very good wearable product for the deaf, a very, very sophisticated engineering product. But the founders were to design people from a Pune school. They hired engineers. Okay, so the founder skills are not necessarily around coding or civil engineering or because you can always hire a, you pay a few lakhs of rupees, you'll get a computer coder or you get a civil engineer or you'll get a, 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 a you know, electrical engineer. 
founder skills at a higher level of having a vision having a passion having a you know a dream and also huge amount of people skills to mobilize you know team members co-founders employees stakeholders government funders so there is a set of skills which you should build if you are a founder engineering skills you can always hire so offline we can talk more about this and you can you can have a chat with me on milind in terms of what does it take to be a good founder okay and i strongly urge you that to develop founder skills which are very different from an engineering skills you don't need to be a, uh, a je topper to do this customer discovery that milind is teaching you yep yep okay you don't need to be a genius to run businesses unless you are like you know you are really and and even then you need co-founders so if you don't have a skill set you can always have a co-founder or an employee no founder knows it all i'd love to have you you know rhythm and others to have your customer number 1 for the blockchain the previous group we were very clear your customer is only one the central bank of the country because if the central bank doesn't approve your your blockchain based kyc will not happen so you actually have to convince us one bank which is a central bank rbi to approve your blockchain design then you go to the other banks and if rbi tells all the other banks to uh, adopt your solution other banks will be forced to do because it could become regulatory okay but think like that think like that think like that think like upi mr nandan nilekani nandan nilekani is our alumni same batch as raj jaswa 75 batch he thought up ud upi he's thinking up ondc okay so he's thinking up the other stack of course he's got government of india support but you guys also start thinking of something like other stack or the upi stack or the or the ondc the the retail disruptions is coming up or chat gpt don't come up with a trivial app for doing matching you know your girls to dresses or boys to hoodies wo sab mat karo theek hai so do some really powerful make sense and next class john hansel is also here from open viva because next class we'll also give them some demo of the of the tool toolkits right wix and Yeah. Yeah. Sound good, Yadu. I just wanted to say uh, one thing which I didn't get a chance to to talk about today, but uh, you know, uh, while I did say you know, and Professor Devdeep also emphasized you know, go out talk to your customers. Uh, you know, I also want to emphasize uh, you know the the hallmark of a good entrepreneur is uh, one of the hallmarks is also that attention to detail. Right? You need to know your customer better than anyone else. and you know i think i mentioned that you know today we live in a world where you you can do that in fact can do it for free right maybe if time permits i'll show you some tools but you know uh, for example um, uh, to to the simple question that somebody had right who are my competitors just uh, uh, using google search you should be able to get a very good perspective a landscape of who are the players in this space right research that very very well right that that person who's working on kyc or the person who's working on the the amazon uh, thing uh, so not amazon the the the, the apparel uh, or the one you know working on data compliance they are well research problem that's a good thing though right research is good because you have that data another simple thing you can do is just once you find out who the competitors are right look up what are the reviews by the the customers of your competitors right that's again gold for you all right we live in an amazing world where people are very free about giving their uh, their reviews there are the good ones which i feel sometimes are doctored uh, but there are also the ones where they are complained you want to know those complaints you want to know that in and out if you can sometimes in in some review sites you are also able to reach that customer or kind of indirectly that customer might leave their name right they might say milin kopiker well guess what i can again reach out to milin kopiker by just doing a google search and finding him or her on the internet and sending them a message saying hey i i i saw that you were a, a customer of this and you left a bad review you know i'm trying to solve that exact problem would love to if you don't mind would like some some of your time and guess what that person is going to say of course you know i hate that experience i had if somebody can solve it for me let's talk right so you want to thanks to the internet you have access to all these guys right we live in an amazing age where you have all this information at your fingertips what people don't have is that attention to detail which you need to build as an entrepreneur you need to say i'm going to keep time and put, put time to reach out to you know it's a funny thing right we live in a world where we have access to everything we want and yet nobody takes action on it 
Why? Because, you know, we, we just uh, want everything to be done, you know, brought to us instead of us trying to make that effort to go and reach out to those people. So anyway, go out of the building, talk to real customers, but also don't hesitate in. And do, actually, before that, do your own research as well. Yeah, Don't just go without doing any research. And there's a lot of opportunity to do research. Just keep aside two hours, open up Google and everything I just said, you should be able to quickly put together. Yeah.